All right. Well, for those of so, you who are just joining us, uh, I, I just turned on the TV because uh, nobody was hearing the panel before. I think they can hear the panel now. Uh, it was an adjustment that I didn't make right. So, you know, uh, that uh, should be okay. But anyway, where were we? Oh, yes. I, I, I don't see a conflict of interest by paying for the services provided from a, from a corporation that you happen to own. And, uh, you know, it, now there would be a conflict of interest if the corporation paid and didn't get reimbursed. That would be a conflict of interest. How? Uh, because then you're, uh, you're abusing uh, the corporate structure. Uh, you know, the same he's thing. He's his own corporation. It's not a stockholder or anything. He, he is the corporation. No, he's not. The corporation, even if he's 100% stockholder, still has a corporate veil that can be pierced if you use it for your own uh, gain. Uh, you have to pay yourself as an employee when you have a corporation. And uh, so, for instance, uh, the gas that my company pays for, uh, for my automobile, uh, a certain percentage of that has to be taken as personal. Uh, I can't take 100% of the fuel that the corporation pays for. Uh, it's just the, the, the way corporations work. And uh, to accuse him of being bad because he lived up to the rules of the corporation, I, I think is wrong. Uh, you know, there were things that he did that he had to pay back because he used uh, his... Um, Phil, uh, Phil, 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 blah, fund. blah, 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 blah. The no, fact no, is, no, 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 wait a minute, the you, fact you, you is, wait a minute. Me. No, no, and, no, no, you're, you're making excuses for bad behavior. The bad behavior here is he should have separated the corporation from the campaign. Money that was used for the campaign should have been independent of using any of his resources in his corporations because that was bad, that was a bad deal. You shouldn't do that. That's that's a no no. His okay. foundation had uh, made a um, a uh, contribution to that Florida uh, woman, uh, uh, that um, a senator or something or a, a prosecutor, and uh, he had to pay that back because it wasn't uh, you know Caught. properly dispersed. This from the is look. You're you're refusing to say it, to to realize that he was running for president of the United States. That when you do that, you divest yourself of your interests and you don't involve your personal interests in the campaign. That's just good. Uh, uh, that, that's the right thing to do. It's okay. only the right thing to do for everyone else that didn't have a Mar-a-Lago, that didn't have his own plane, that oh. didn't have these things that could have been utilized for his campaign. And you don't know, you've it's, accused him, but you don't know whether or not he just charged cost. Uh, for these things, and he got a better deal than if he would have farmed it out. What are you holding up? What are you holding up, Rob? Is that a drink? This is yeah. your fault because I wasn't going to drink tonight, but you, you just, I, I'm having scotch. I just can't help. Oh, oh, I'm drinking, Rob. Nice. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm having water. Well, you know, here's what I originally had here: water. <laughs> All right. I, I just can't. You know, I, I look. I understand you're a, you're a Trump supporter. You're you're a conservative, and that's cool. All right, but for no, you not to see, for you not to see. Oh, these, Renee's calling. No oh, boy, Phil's gonna get it now. Or if you somehow think, hmm, maybe you there's a choke from Hawaii. <laughs> problem here is just infuriating because he's only gonna do this very same thing in in overdrive starting January twentieth, and. Know. To you, Phil, I'm gonna the first tonight. Yeah, go, go ahead. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna sure. have uh, I'm gonna have my Snapple. I think that it fermented I'm enough sitting here. That... Hello, Renee. Hi. Yeah. So I was trying to call you to tell you what was happening on live stream, but I've been having a lot of internet problems, and I no idea why Time Warner Cable actually exists. But go <laughs> ahead, let me know, because I and don't understand it cut the cord you know phil what i would like to cut <laughs> the, the widow woman wants to cut <laughs> can you say lorena bobbitt oh honey i've got you know they use these really nice renee is there any is there any light you can turn on there because you're you're Everything I do here is wrong. I have 
<laughs> that's because you're a Democrat. Well, that's because while we're doing the show, the sun is going down there. Oh, there we go. You see, the only reason I want light on you, Renee, is because it's uh, it's TV night, and people should see that lovely punum. Well, you know. the, the reason I was just bitching is because not only has my computer been down, up and down for fucking days... This light bulb just went out. Oh, well, you, there's enough <laughs> light there now, I think. you got to get those bulbs that never go out. I got them out in the apartment. Yeah. I'm just like, really? Now? Seriously, bulbs? Yeah, buy LED lights. Replace yeah, it with right. an that's LED. Good. That's the ones. They will live. Well, you have to get rid of the old ones first. Tell them about the LEDs. They never burn out. They, well, they do. 23 years <laughs> later. I have yeah, bulbs. Right. I have bulbs here now that are going to outlive me. <laughs> It's worth, and you say which is again. which is a bit depressing, to be honest with you. You know, like that's the reason I don't get a kitten, because I don't have a cat sitting in the house looking, saying, you know, I'm going to be here after you're gone. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm going to outlive you, old man. You know, so they're going to do all sorts of things to your face while you're asleep. Yeah. Now, girlfriend says, why don't you take the cat, the fifty thousand dollar cat? You know that uh, Anne left $50,000 to. Uh, yeah. and, and if the cat dies, then that the rest of the money goes to PETA. Okay. That's, uh, you know the golden rule? What? How old is the cat? The the ca a cat is not young. 50 grand? Even if the cat's 10? 8? I don't know how... I, don't, I think if the, it was a kitten, I can't see how it would eat $50,000 worth of cat food in its lifetime. No, but if something happens and the cat gets cancer or the cat has something that you're expected to do yeah. whatever you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Take care of the cat, so. Yeah. So if the cat wanted to go to Hawaii, I'd have to take it? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and put a lay around its neck. Yeah, yeah. And light bulb. Yeah. <laughs> so I have pictures. I have a picture of a whale's tail, but that's as far as I've gotten so far. All without equipment for a whale's tail? So far, they've, they've been hiding. Okay, so everybody who doesn't know, I am on, I'm between Maui, I'm, Maui's the next island up, and between Maui and my, our island, there's a channel. And the whales play between Maui and between my this island, and usually, about now, we're going to see anywhere between one to two to four whale sightings per day. Pardon? What kind of what kind of species are they? Oh, <laughs> humpbacks. <laughs> um, you know, I don't remember their exact, but I will look up the ones that I've shot so far and get back to you to on I, my. I, I thought they were humpbacks that uh, mainly migrate uh, in that area. I don't know if it's just humpbacks because the one I saw to, or the other day that I got a picture of, and that's how they tell tell what whale it is because the their tail is very every whale's tail is different. The so, fluke. Yeah, so fluke. it's kind of neat because all I got was a picture of the tail. So and it was a baby, so they're probably going to name it. I probably have to send it off to the Whale Institute or something. So they'll yeah. do that. But anyway, yeah, it's whale yeah. season and it's going to be kind of fun. It's it sure beats yeah. pool. Politics. <laughs> well, it, well, uh, but th th what we're talking about is very important. And oh no, uh, Phil doesn't. He's not gonna. He doesn't live on this planet. Uh, you people have got to get this. No, he doesn't planet. live on an ethical planet. You know, no. there are certain are ethics. Is, there are certain ethics that you have to have. Uh, uh, you know, you've become president. Therefore, there are certain kind of rules that you have to live by. They're not necessarily legal rules. Their ethical rules, and uh, I, again, I say his biggest problem, Trump's biggest problem, is he doesn't realize he's an employee now. You know, I, he's I, he I, doesn't I, he I, is I, not running he is not running a company. He is not his own boss. He is the boss of him is the American people, and he's an employee. And even if he's taking one dollar, it's a civil service job. Well, I, I just don't think that your a definition of uh, unethical uh, fits the uh, accusation that you're making. Of maybe Trump. because I'm too ethical for you, Phil. Uh, maybe, <laughs> maybe because your ethics aren't real, you know, and uh, my ethics aren't you know, real. How are they not real? How are ethics not real? 
because uh, Trump is not doing anything unethical, and you're holding him to a standard that you that hold you on wouldn't a hold necessarily on a second. hold yourself. Uh, Rob, no. is, is he? Wait a minute. Hold standard of every other presidential person who's been in that office since it started. These Correct. are ethics that other presidents have not crossed the line for and believe in and have said, if I'm going to be president, I'm following X, Y, and Z because all the rest of the presidents did. Jimmy, none of the, Jimmy saying, Carter, what was, what was, what was, what was, what was, what was, Jim, what was Jimmy Carter? He uh, as a, it was a he, peanut farmer. Yeah, it was a peanut farmer. He had a peanut farm. And right. he made he, down there in uh, Georgia. I can't remember where. Um, Plains. Pl Plains, Plains, Georgia. Plains. Yeah, uh, he uh, he had a peanut farm. When he became president, that went into a blind trust. He stopped being in the peanut business. Okay. It's a lot easier you not to push be a the peanut peanuts farmer. Oh, no. oh that, wait a minute. Is it a lot easier to be not to be a peanut farmer than to be a failed uh, a real estate mogul? Well, he's got real estate and things all over the world, and uh, allowing his no, he has things with his name on him. He doesn't own them, but right. no, he still he, has a lot that he does own. Yeah, he he owns a bunch of stuff, and that's a problem. If you don't see that, that's a problem. I don't see I don't it's care how ethical of a person you are. You still have a business. You still have a business sense, and whether you're directly sitting in that CEO chair or not. When you make decisions as president of the United States, knowing that you have those businesses, you can't tell me that any human being isn't going to take that into consideration before he makes a decision, which could impact him in a negative way. Well, so far, the decisions that he made to settle the lawsuits, to pay $25 million, to do all of these things uh, were for the better betterment of the country. No, they were for to get everything to stop talking about him because yes. of his ego. Yep. No, he yeah. needed he didn't Nothing want to, to be in a position that would have uh, that would have created uh, a negative issue on the uh, president. The man's going to be up on impeachment charges before he gets through just because of the way he's behaving and all of his improprieties. If he doesn't change those things, it's going to blow up in his face. All right, you you and you're, hope you're so. creating an issue where there is no issue. No, it's like Alex's, that's actually not it's true. Like Alex wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. Yeah. Phil, you can be quiet for a second. Let Renee say something here. So, that's not, so what's happening now is he's appointed two really high-profile people. One is the Exxon gentleman who is Rex Tillman, and the other guy is the Golden Sachs guy. These people are literally trying to unwind all of their financial dealings so that they can put them in trust so that they can be the heads of those departments because it's that important to them. They have, you, the guy, the guy, Golden, I, I, you I, cannot know. You cannot tell me the person that comes from Goldman Sachs has less than Donald Trump. Not a friggin' chance does the Goldman, the guy who runs Goldman Sachs have less investments than Donald Trump does. Not in any way, shape, or form on any fucking. And plan. the guy who's the head of Exxon doesn't say, you know, I'll take the job of what? What are they giving him? Is that this? Is that Secretary of State? Uh, yes. The guy from Exxon. He doesn't say, I'll be Secretary of State, but in in, in my free time, I'll still run Exxon. Yeah, he doesn't. Well, do he's that. not allowed to. But uh, President Trump, so, uh, President is Trump, allowed to. Is allowed to. Is exempt from that. So, Phil, we had uh, a Wait. mayor in New York City for many years whose name was uh, Michael Bloomberg, right? Mm -hmm. Michael Bloomberg took and put everything into a blind trust, all of it, for the time that he was mayor of New York City, right? You think Michael, Bro Michael Bloomberg is worth $36.5 billion? Trump yeah, says, Trump. Trump, yeah, is about $10 billion. Oh, no, no, he's, yeah, ten, or, only or, about $10 billion. you're right. So this guy's like, what, Oh, no, no, Trump, Trump's only about, only Trump's uh, somewhere around $3 billion, and maybe not even that. Forbes, yeah. Forbes says 3.7. Yeah. Yeah, but, but, says, no. uh, but like everything else, it's a lie. Bloomberg is, is mm. far better a business person, and what did Bloomberg do? The same thing that Tillman's doing, the same thing that the <laughs> other one's doing. These people are doing it because they want to make sure that everything that they do is clean. They're Above doing what they have to. Above board. Above board, so that so, nobody can say anything, so that even if there's any hint of impropriety, they can't say anything. Mm -hmm. 
his his area is so muddied because he's going to move his daughter, supposedly who's running his company, into the east wing of the White House. He brings them to all these important meetings. Yeah. I can understand you're a fan, okay, but if you don't see the possible impropriety here, okay. So he had this meeting with all these techno guys uh, again. I'm not watching the news, so I have to get my information from you. What happened in that meeting? Uh, I I saw something where one of the people who was going there said they were only going there because it was out of courtesy, you know, that they'd been asked to come to the White House to talk with him, and so they went out of courtesy. Is that what you heard? And that uh, what, I, I, didn't hear I heard they went. I heard he met with some of them, but I didn't know which companies they were representing, which industries within the Valley they were representing, and what happened after the meeting. I think they were people like Tim Cook, I think, was there. Bill Gates was there, uh, too. They know that. Uh, Bill Gates yeah. was there, yeah. Funny, uh, yeah. That before. So Bill Gates might have been in that meeting, and he immediately left the meeting and gave like a billion dollars to World Health Organizations or something like that uh, within, within 24 hours. He yeah. gave a shitload of money to a to a humanitarian reason, and my guess is because he felt so stanky after he left. You know, twenty years ago, Bill Gates was the most hated guy in America, and so what he did was he uh, started giving some money away. No, he wasn't the most hated guy in America. Who was president at the time? Was, what his company was hated. His, his company, company was hated. No, well, they didn't like Bill Gates either. You have you ever cured a disease in a country? Have you, have you ever cured a disease in a country? Bill Gates and Melinda Gates have done that. He must I, get I'm rather, sure they have. And do you think he left the room, room Bill? Hmm? You think but, Bill left the room and said, my God, his yeah. kids are stupid and I got to sit with them? They get I, I, well, I think a lot they of them went. The I think a lot of them they went. They said that they like Trump. No, no. no. Who said they like Trump? Tell me one of them that said them. no. All, all of them. All of them. I would bet Trump's a really fun guy to be around. He might I bet be. he's a nice guy. He's a man. Wait, wait, man. A minute, wait a minute. You're you're mixing up your Trump's a wonderful guy with all the people a couple of days ago who came out of a meeting and said he was a wonderful guy. Did these techno guys, any of them, say he was a wonderful guy? Those were the guys that said. No, that no, was no. Good. That was that meeting was today, wasn't it? They probably got no. Yeah, well, it was what, the other day. What, what, the other day? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was either right at the end of last week or the beginning of this. No, week. it was like Tuesday or Wednesday, I believe. Oh, really? Boy, it's all blurring. Now. God, I, I'm glad I don't watch the news because my stomach would be you know, churning every so day. I'm actually looking forward to the inauguration. That's going to be like crazy. I'm not going to watch it. Neither will Still's I. Going to be on cloud nine. Every, every year, uh, every time they have those inaugurations, there's a guy with a special camera called a Gigapan, and yeah. they take this picture. It's like thousands of pictures that they join together, and you can click on it on the internet, and you can see people's faces a mile away uh, in the uh, in the thing. So you can, you can actually just zoom in on the most minute detail. Uh, that uh, that they use. Oh, that must be camera. fascinating. I want to see some guy who's standing well, in I the mean, crowd. I, I, I looked at the people on the stage. I looked at people in the crowd. Uh, and you can, you can. there's a gigapan of, uh, of Obama's. Uh, well, I just want to thank Sorry. Okay, got it. I apologize. Uh, yeah, yeah it, it's actually pretty neat photography. The yeah. president said on his... Yeah, like, uh, uh, Jeff. I have Phil, I wonder if you're going to be going there. No. Washington, D.C. No, I, matter of fact, I'm, I'm having some issues where I'm going to be stuck in my store like a prisoner. Uh, I, I'm not even going to go to the convention this year. Uh, why? Why? Yeah. You gonna, why? Um, I um, I'm not happy with the showroom gal that I that I've had for the last six months. I'm letting her go tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna I hope she's not time. listening to this show now. Yeah, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it myself. Uh, it, all the sales, and uh, I'm just going to do the measures in the morning. I'm going to do them in the evening, and I'm going to man the showroom during the day. And uh, uh, so, so, why are you doing minutes. it yourself? Why don't you just find somebody else to do it? Uh, I've I've had other people I'm over available. the last twenty years, and all it creates is aggravation. Oh really? Really? Yeah. You know. Oh, I, I need this. Hey, thing running a business is aggravation. Off. Unless you're Donald Trump and you let your kids do it. 
He's yeah. going to fire her like Trump tomorrow. That's terrible. Yeah. No, right I, around Christmas. It's a week before Christmas. My God. I yeah, mean, you she, bum. She, she kept taking, you know, uh, if she had no consideration of my schedule uh, when she would say take take this day off and that day off. She'd just take herself off the schedule. But she wanted a full, you know, the full pay. Uh, so I just decided that, you know what, I'm going to go back to using commissioned people. You know, you fire her, and you know what's going to happen if you fire her, Phil. Right. You're going to be visited like by three ghosts on Christmas Eve. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not. So we, we clear for the ball drop, at least. Yeah. The, well, the, the ghost of, uh, of, ghost, of, go, of Rugs well, past? Yeah. Present well, I'm and paying, future. I'm, I'm paying her a lot of money. And you know what? I'm not getting my money's worth. Uh, it's the kind of thing <laughs> he that... He sounds like Trump. Well, <laughs> you know, I might be working with a customer at 5 o'clock when the store closes. Yeah. Uh, you know, she's out the door. Uh, oh, really? I, yeah. I, you know, I'm, I'm tired of people like that that have no skin in the game. So, you know what? I'll just hire commissions that are going to give people better service. Have you uh, had any consultation with her to tell her you're not happy with her service? Uh, oh, she's at will. She's, oh, she's an at will. It's at will. She's an at will. But, uh, still, I mean, why don't you try to, you know, work with her and say, I'm not happy with this or I'm not happy with that? The whole well, like, um, at will. The I, whole I, 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 I need to pick a different direction. The direction that I went uh, with her six months ago is not uh, is is not beneficial. Uh, you know, she sits there, and uh, I'm doing all the work. I work like feverishly, and uh, you know, she sits there, puts the time in, and goes home. Yeah, you know, and uh, you know, does what she does. And, well, and, she doesn't own the business. Right. Well, you know, she makes uh, in uh, some weeks she makes more than me, so. Uh, 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 that's it's gonna end tomorrow. Oh my, I don't know if it's gonna end. That sounds cryptic. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that's terrible. You fight on a Saturday, you got Sunday off, but still. Well, I would have done it today, but I had to figure it's out. It's amazing though that, that you can't find somebody to do that job who will do a good job of it, you know. Hey, for 20 years, I haven't found anybody, you know. Uh, is it so. is it that you're too particular, or is it that you're you Could know. Be. Yeah, because I mean, if be you're tough. saying if you're saying she's just you know, you're running around and she just goes home at five. Well, you're the business owner, man. You, it's your business. You know, it's not right. her business. Well, as long as I have people in the showroom, she should stick around. Oh, she's leaving when the customers are there. Right. So oh, wow. you know, I thought you said you were working with the customer though. Yeah, yeah, I'm working with the customer, but she's supposed to be my my uh, my helper. You know, my uh, assistant. And uh, you know, you okay, just don't. You just said she was the the, the man, floor manager. You didn't say she also had the title of your kiss ass assistant. Well, the, her her job was to set up uh, estimates for me to do work with oh. uh, customers in the showroom and be my assistant. Well, you know something. Uh, I'll tell you, if you want to set up Skype, I can be there every day on yeah. on the Skype and uh, I, and I'll you pay me whatever you pay her plus I'll have to charge you for the use of this apartment <laughs> uh, because I'm going to be doing it from here and, right, the and, rent and my rent yeah. here is I'm not paying well, anything right zero. now but I'll yeah. I'll let you I'll let you pay, I'll only charge you about 3000 a month for the rent how's that that's nice matter of fact for that kind of money I'll move in oh boy i just i just uh boy you know i'm so happy i haven't seen the news and i don't feel i mean i don't feel this show has suffered because of it uh because well, that's, that's we're telling you all the news well you're yeah, telling we me the news and i also i also see the headlines <laughs> make it up. okay i see the headlines what i don't have to see is i don't have to see trump Oh God! I that's one thing I relish is that I don't have to see Trump. Well, so, well yeah. Monday's the day. And and Monday's and I don't have to. I, I don't have to see all these pundits pontificating about well, if he does this and does that. And I understand that the press is pretty well sucking up to him right now. You know, they're not being terribly critical of him. Well, because they're afraid of him. Well, did yeah, you? He's the president. In Vanity Fair, Vanity yeah. Fair went in and reviewed his restaurant at Trump Towers and said, eh, and he had, he fought back to Vanity Fair and started to, yeah. to 
Unbelievable. He's been fighting with that guy. He's been fighting with that guy for 30 years. I don't give a really? fine shit. The Not fucking the president president of the United States. He's been fighting with what guy? Uh, the guy who's the uh, uh, editor of Vanity Graydon Fair. Graydon Carter? He used to be the editor of something Graydon, called Spy Magazine. Gr Graydon Carter. Elevate yourself. You're the fucking president-elect. He's, so, yeah, he's such a baby. Elevate like yourself. Baby. He's so you're thin skinned that now. Yeah. Well, we'll so see. you're going to be Trump tomorrow when you can. I, you better yeah. do it nicely. What? What? He's going to be Trump hey, tomorrow. I'm, 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 I'm not going to talk to you. Sent her home. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Remember that vacation you wanted? Yeah. Well, you got it all year round. <laughs> yeah, well, that's exactly uh, what what's going on. No, you you want more like time that. off? No problem. You got yeah, more time joking, off. You want. How much time yeah, do you think he's, he's going to spend at the White House as opposed to Trump that. Tower? I had a boss tell me that once at radio station. It was a a month before, three weeks before Christmas, and I was oh. working in Central Florida at this FM Top 40 station. Yeah. The PD comes and sits in my office, or comes and sit in the studio when I was on the air, and he says to me, I got some good news for you and some bad news for you. Five you on the air? He says, yeah, he says to me, I'm going to give you the good news first. I'm going to give you a chance to go home for Christmas. Thank everybody. This it's is sorry. Uh, Go Bad ahead. news is you could stay there. <laughs> <laughs> that might have been the good news. Oh, man. It, it turned out to be the good news, but it didn't feel that way at the time. Well, that's too bad. It's too bad. I saw five from the supermarket ones. Right. Asked, it was Jeff Bezos from Amazon. Eli yeah. Can you imagine Musk sitting there I, listening to this? I love episode? Amazon too. I'm addicted to it. I don't. I, well, I don't. I don't know where Elon Musk is politically. I know that Jeff Bezos is 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 a Republican. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Are you yeah. sure? Because I I don't think no. any of those people. No, Bezos were... is known to be quite a right winger. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. It could, but if you had that kind of brain power, think about this. Elon Musk has done something that we've never done before, and that's had a rocket take off and come back and land in a particular place. Never been done before. So his brain is... Albeit on its side, but, you know, it landed. Well, the first two times, yeah. He did get one. No, he's still... He, he, they're still having trouble with that, but it, they're getting there, you know. Yeah. So Tim Cook... At some time, we're going to say we were alive when Elon Musk was alive. But can you imagine somebody with that much of a brain power sitting in a room with Donald Trump for a couple of hours? I you love what Tim Cook did. did what? Did you hear what Tim Cook tried to do? What did he try what? to do? Uh, sell him an extended warranty. <laughs> Probably got him, Alex, and everything. <laughs> yeah. I don't even have the phone. Don't worry. Take the warranty. <laughs> Uh, he's probably, imagine he's got a Google phone, Trump. He don't even have the iPhone. Does he? Uh, I don't know. I was just. I don't know, but uh, I don't know what he tweets on. You know, that's a good question. Though, like Renee said, I was telling Phil this offline once. I kind of like the idea that I grew up with the whole growth of the computer generation, the video games. How you got to see everything. Do you think Trump has any idea what's going on with this or no? Like no. technology. <laughs> The article says, <laughs> and someone he said, what's the worst thing you can hear from a government employee? I'm here to help you. Oh, yeah. Who said that? Reagan? Was yeah, that a Reagan that's thing? That's trouble then, huh? It says the quote, it, okay, and this is the New York Times, but I'm still going to give it to you. It says the quote is, I'm here to help Donald Trump tells the tech executives at a meeting. That's the headline. I'm here to help. Do you really think that other than with the visa problem, that these creative people, these cutting edge people, these world leader people want to deal with him and to think that actually he could help them in some way other than the visa problem? Yeah. No. That shows you they need to, that shows you there's very smart people overseas that they need to work here. So. Well, the thing is, is that's really those H2. Oh, actually, I got to tell you something. Uh, 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 Rob, Rob brought up something the other night. And I feel that it was the best piece of uh, uh, the best notion I've heard in a long time. And uh, I, I hail you for it, Rob, because I was saying it to a girlfriend and a few other people at dinner one night. And that's when you said that people have to learn that maybe in order to find a good job, they're going to have to go to other countries. Yep. And I think we're going to start seeing an exodus from this country by people going to other countries to work. But first they gotta get used to the idea because Americans have never been much used to that. But you know, um, 
they're going to find out that living in the Scandinavian countries isn't half bad, and the and they can find a job for what they do over there, you know, uh, and America. and so I think that Americans have to start thinking of themselves as uh, being as uh, worldwide as the uh, economy is, you know. And that they have to go where the jobs are. And I think right. if that starts happening, you're going to what see a massive happening? exodus out of this country. You see I, a lot of ex American expats working in, in other countries, the in especially in Asia, Asia Pacific. Um, they're usually not permanent. They, they'll go for two, four, three or four or five years. Um, <clears throat> the problem in, in, in Asia PAC is that these people are extremely smart. You know, especially, you know, Singapore, these are brilliant people. The problem with it, their educational system there doesn't leave any room for thinking outside the box. So these people come out of school and they're very book smart and they're great at math and they're just you give them. The problem is they can't run their own businesses because they don't know how to start a business. So they what they do is they start businesses and they bring Americans in Americans who are and, and they go there and they work three or five years and they establish the company and then they te they train the, the Singaporeans to uh, to 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 run the business because they're good at that. But they're when it comes to thinking outside the box because of the way they're educated, they don't get that too much. Well, uh, well all, all I'm what were you saying, Jeff? I think uh, that's very true, and, and there's a number of uh, people who help uh, companies in different uh, locations, and what they really do is they bring in somebody on a very short term to kind of get, just get the, the business started. Yep. And, and, you know, even for a year or something uh, is, uh, is enough to... Getting in the right direction. Well, the smart place to go a few years ago, uh, although it's not that true anymore because the uh, the work market has been glutted there finally, was to go to uh, Brussels, uh, go to, uh, uh, where was it? Uh, Belgium? Uh, huh? Belgium? Belgi not Belgium. Uh, it's one of the Slavic countries. No, uh, uh, um, oh, God, I'm trying to remember now what country it was. Not Holland. Well, I think Hungary. I think Budapest. Oh, some uh, of the East. Yeah, uh, and they were they love if you were an American, they would hire you in a second because you had some kind of skill that they <clears throat> still they were jonesing for over there. Uh, and a lot of a lot of young people went over there, made a fortune. What were you going to say, Jeff? A lot of people went to Russia um, when the uh, communist business uh, went over, and and all of a sudden in Russia. There was a lot of uh, corporations that had to correct themselves from a communist situation to become independent companies. Right. And so a lot of Americans came, uh, made a lot of money there. A lot of them didn't see, be successful, but a lot of them were, worked there for a long, long time. I actually went to Australia for for uh, four months to do a project there. So it's, it's an interesting thing to do. Yeah, but I have a friend who works in television. He did audio. He's, he's pa since passed, but um, he was an audio technician. Worked here in New York, in in uh, D.C. at at uh, NBC WRC. He's worked all. He's a really well respected audio technician. He went. Uh, he, he got a job with Al Jazeera here in the states, uh, yeah. and he wound up going overseas to work for Al Jazeera, and he loved it. He absolutely loved it. And unfortunately, while he was doing that, he passed away from skin cancer. But uh, uh, yeah. he, you know, he, he just loved being in uh, Qatar, I think it was. If, he was... If, if, yeah, if I were younger, I might think of leaving this country and going and finding a broadcasting job somewhere else. Because I think there are places in this world where I could easily get a job. But at my age, it, you know, the traveling is something, you know, it, it's a whole different story. But Tokyo Alex, huh? Thing. Tokyo Shit. Alex, Tokyo problem, Alex. Right. Many other countries would let you let you be as free as you are in this country still to speak your mind. Um, you know, you, go, you, you know, that's not, and I think there are some countries that don't have a problem. For instance, England does not have a problem. They don't have a problem with language. They don't have a problem with uh, 
with people talking vociferously about politics, uh, you go to Scandinavian countries, that, that would be a pretty free place to go and do broadcasting. You can't uh, talk about the uh, you can't talk about the uh, royal family in in Great Britain, honestly, can you? Yes, you can. I I know some uh, people who actually were on radio there and were in favor of doing away with the monarchy, thinking it was a total waste of time and money. Hmm. Uh, They cut off their heads or just hang them? No, just do away with it. In other words, no, no, no. I'm talking about the broadcasters. uh, No, no, no. Uh, In fact, there was a major movement there, but the Brits. In fact, I think it actually came to a vote once, and Hmm. the Brits voted against it because they like queen and country. You know, they like that whole. It's Hmm. kind of a representation of everything that's English. You know, every street in between. What? America is full of streets. I'm trying to find a statistic for you guys, but I can't find it without video coming up. So. Yeah. Don't you love that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, so what it was is that uh, Donald Trump has requested H- HB1 visas for uh, less than 100 people to go work at his Del Mar, Florida golf course. And the reason he does that is because he can pay them less than the minimum wage that Florida requires them to do. Yes, but so that, but that, 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 to get that kind of visa, you have to prove a necessity that you cannot get somebody in American to do that job. I thought he's, he's, doing, it he's been doing it for they, almost ten years. I thought they were technical, technical, but I think they might apply to anything actually. But it right. has to be that we have this guy; he has a unique ability. And we can't we can't find anybody who can do it here. Okay, great. Give them an H one. What is it? B visa. And uh, but I've talked to people also. I think on this program who've gotten those visas. And I remember when I was working at CNET, we always talked about the fact that it was kind of an enforced form of slavery. Because what happens is, let's say, yep. Habib comes from India, and he goes to work at a technological company in Silicon Valley. He brings his family with him, they buy a house, they move into Silicon Valley, and now he is at the behest of that company because if at any any moment they say, you're fired, they have to go back to India. They can't stay here. That's right. So anything they want to do with that guy, anything they want to pay that guy, they do, and it's it, it actually became in Silicon Valley a form of slavery, and a re- bunch of us, like on CNET, I was talking about it all the time. It's yeah. interesting, because I've worked with a few of those people over time, and they were paid pretty well. They yeah, were paid pretty I, well, see, but, but, they, but, they, but still, uh, they were... They're getting raped by their, like, for example, I, I worked, uh, we, had, we brought in a company to do uh, an ERP system for us. My first job here when I got here to uh, Virginia, and, uh, you know, they brought in a whole bunch of people to, to write code and do all this work. And they brought in this woman to, to, from India to, to do some of the coding. And uh, she was paid very well. She, was, she lived a good life. Um, and then she went back to India to get married and never came back. But yeah. um, that was her choice. Well, I mean, it's not but, that they don't pay them decent money. What I'm saying is they don't get the same advancements that other people might, you know, because the only thing they, the only thing, you know, you have to get an advancement to be happy or a raise to be happy, right, Rob? Because that's their way of keeping you around. However, with someone with one of those visas, the way of keeping them around is, yeah, we're paying you enough money, but also you're not going to get a raise because if you want a raise, we're going to get rid of you, and that means you're going to have to go back to where you came from. Uh, HB1 uh, visa people... Uh, if they lose their job, then they have to go back. Well, they yes. have to get another job almost immediately. That's right. Of, that's and right. And so they, that's, the, that's their limitation. They live yeah. in this constant fear. Yes, Jeff. I had uh, one uh, Canadian engineer who worked for me. And, and uh, when I was hiring him, I didn't even realize that he was Canadian uh, and, until the interview. Animal. And I had no problem with that. And I, he had worked with some other companies in in the area. And uh, so he was pretty well recommended and all those kind of things. And I, I think I even met him before that a couple of times. 
But anyway, he worked for us for six months, a year or something like that. And uh, well, he was a very smart guy and uh, he's a little slow. And I ultimately had to get rid of him because of that. We had a little shutdown and I said, he's the, he's the one that has to leave, unfortunately. Anyway, I found out that he was very concerned because he really couldn't go to the government and, and get for any kind of compensation for unemployment. Even, even though he could get the unemployment, it gave him the risks of being thrown out of the United States because the reason that he was here was to do engineering work because we didn't have enough engineers in, in the United States. Uh, ultimately, he got a different job someplace else, and I've seen him many times, and he's pretty happy. And he's got kids who are American because they were born there, but him and his wife live here, and uh, they're theoretically very concerned about the kind of things that everybody uh, thinks about throwing Mexicans out of the United States. It's, well, well it's it, isn't just, ju it isn't just Mexicans. I mean, basically, no, it's, it's an anti-immigrant uh, uh, viewpoint. And um, I always kind of, the one thing was, we, we, at least when I was growing up, the, we bragged about the, with this country is that we were the home of immigrants, you know? We were the country that embraced immigration. Uh, and then I, the other day, I, uh, I was watching a documentary on Cuba, and there was a, a boat out of, uh, I think out of Brussels, call, or, uh, called uh, the, uh, the St. Louis. And it had nothing but Jews who wanted to get out of Germany and migrate and it pulled into Cuba's harbor and was told to, it was told that anybody who wanted to stay there could but it would cost them so much and it was a little, quite a bit of money so some people disembarked there but then that boat had to turn around and go somewhere else came to the United States the United States wouldn't take them and so ultimately you had to go back to Europe and who knows how many of those Jews died as a result of the United States and Cuba not accepting people off yeah. that, uh, that off that FDR. ship. That was FDR. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't uh, take that many Jews. For, uh, let's, so somebody tell me if this statement is true. A, we didn't take that many Jewish people from World War II. We didn't take any. We didn't, we didn't take, take any. We didn't take any? We didn't take any. No, they we, went to Sweden uh, and, uh, and a couple of other and, and And the ones who had money did go to Cuba. The one, they, they I, had, I had a couple I knew who were, fled the Holocaust, and uh, they went through Cuba to get into the United States, because once you were in Cuba, you could then come into the United States. So, But you had to pay uh, Batista uh, a really princely sum to get off the boat, okay? Yes, now, Jeff? There were, there were two countries that would accept any Jews from Germany. Uh, you know, during the... And I know 40s. what one of them was. One of them was Spain, right? No. Spain, well, yes, it was. Uh, but that was but, a small... well, 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 no. No, it wasn't a small amount. What happened was um, Franco, Franco, Franco accepted. accepted one million Jews. When Hitler said, look, I don't want to kill Jews. I just want to get rid of them. So if anybody wants them, any country will take them. I will send you as many as you want. Well, the United States didn't take a single one. Franco said, I'll take a million. And then when they got there, he said, it's under the provision that you try to get out of here as fast as possible because I can't take this many people into this country and feed them and take care of them and so on. So you have to go somewhere else. But I at least got you out of Germany so you wouldn't get killed. Nobody knows why Franco, who is one of the worst human beings alive, did that, but he did. And yet what one of the people we consider one of the most wonderful people that ever lived, FDR, didn't. Okay? So. Did we take any, excluding the Jews, did we take any? No. I mean, it was timing, wasn't it? If you stop and think about it, we were just coming out of a depression. Yeah, no, but I mean, good at that point. you had to know you were saving lives if you took them in and they weren't being taken in. Yes, Jeff, what were you going to say? Okay. The Philippines, the Filipinos, they accepted. Uh, people from uh, Germany, mm -hmm. and the other one is China, and I had an aunt, and she grew up grew up in China, and I also met a guy who 
who lived in the Philippines. Yeah, but if they if, uh -huh. if the Chinese took them, the next thing you knew, the Japanese were attacking China. That's you, you true. Know, so and, Filipino Philippines also had the same problem. Yeah, they were attacked yeah. by Japan. Yeah, yeah. So you know, so you know, Japan. it was like out of the and frying Japan pan into the that, fire. It was a good thing to kill Jews too. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I always held that against the United States that they they couldn't save some Jews' lives, you know. And then we sit around and go, "Oh, boo-hoo, the Holocaust." Well, you know, by not taking Jews in, we were complicit in the Holocaust. We helped it along. We well, did in a lot of other ways. We built the railroad tracks. Well, and and IBM supplied the computers that kept track of all the uh, of all the uh, prisoners. Did you know that? No. Huh? What were you Siemens. saying, Renee? What? Siemens. Siemens. You guys know Siemens is this huge German company, right? Right. 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 They right. used slave Jews through World War II for almost everything they could. They yeah. were horrific towards towards prisoners, and all of and all of their prisoners were Jews. So next time you do something with Siemens, you gotta gotta go. Yay! What? Thank you. We know and how to do it. General Electric too. I heard too. Well, was it General uh, as well? Oh, I, know General I think had didn't Ford didn't say, Ford something. didn't Ford keep doing business with Hitler for quite a while? Yeah, I think yeah, you're I, right. Yeah. And Trump would have done business with Hitler. Oh, absolutely. You know, uh, Trump appointed a uh, hardliner to uh, be ambassador to Israel. Yeah, because we want to start that as another <laughs> fucking fight. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm, Jeff, I'm you had Jeff had his hand up, I think, didn't you? Yeah, I was going to say that. I, from what I understand, Ford, uh, the original Henry Ford, was a real racist, uh, well-known. Yeah. So was John Rockefeller. No, he he was anti-Semitic. Ford was quite anti-Semitic. He had a thing called the Dearborn. I can't remember the name of the newspaper, and it was a uh, anti-Semitic newspaper. And he published it for a long time until he got so much bad publicity and it was affecting sales of automobiles that he that he stopped doing it. Uh, well, we're not going to be. So the question is, is how how willing are we to sit aside while Trump starts these registers registries? He's only going to register Democrats. I thought and he was. And those climate change people. The climate change he people. In it. I thought he wanted to. He doesn't believe in the dinosaurs. Muslim. Muslim registry, yeah, and Facebook. Look, I don't know if it's I don't know if it's global warming. I don't know if it's climate change, but I got to tell you, things are getting worse. When you see that the whole ice flows are disappearing in the Arctic, you can't just write it off to natural attrition. You know, I mean, the planet does go through changes. There's no question about it, but not that, uh, not that. Uh, uh, what can we call it? That uh, that profoundly. Yeah. So well, I was looking at the weather maps j just before I was why I was doing this. Isn't don't we all have people in the middle of the United States that are getting pounded by the snowstorm? Yeah, but I, I I don't think that is a question of global warming as much as it is that there are sometimes unusual weather patterns. But the thing is, what we're finding is that, for instance, the seas are rising, and the reason they're rising is because the ice flows are melting. Right. Uh, and so when we and we we see. Uh, uh, bigger and more ferocious uh, uh, tropical place. storms because of uh, uh, the Gulf Streams water. and the fact that they're getting making the water warmer, okay? And the warm water does cause hurricanes and causes them to be more ferocious than they would normally be. You know what well, I say? Well, Tony wants to say yeah. something. Yes, Tony. You know, when I was a kid, when we, used to, when we were studying on the dinosaurs and the Ice Age, yeah. I always thought in the back of my mind, if it happened once... Maybe we all can get wiped out down the road. Like maybe this global warming could lead. Can ever ever happen it's, again? Like some kind of well, catastrophe. Well, like the that? ice it age. Been seven oh. times, Tony. The, uh, there have been seven extinction. Extinction. I mean, can we get extinct? Maybe we think we're so superior throughout the history of the world. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. Again. Wait. Repeat that again for him, Scott. Say it one more time. I want you to hear this. Repeat yeah, it one more time, Scott. There have been seven extinction events over the course of the history of the earth that they can document wow that's interesting yeah, yeah so you know the somebody put out a movie recently i thought was said the eighth event or something like that for the next time no, 
Yeah, it's coming. <laughs> well, you know, I, 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 you know, we can fuck up this planet all we want to, and there's only one thing that's going to survive after we fucked it up completely, and that's the planet itself, because yeah. it it will. Good for the planet. Well, we well, it, uh, ice ages happen when the planet needs to literally core off a layer of the Earth and clean it all up, and does it on its own. Doesn't care if you're here. Doesn't care and what's. Be the fossil fuel. Huh? It's and we'll be the next fossil. Yeah. We'll be the next yeah. fossil fuel, right? Yeah. You know, uh, but I mean, it, 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 it. I just find it a little uh, unbelievable that there are a small group of people who are now in power who don't believe in global warming to any extent, or uh, somehow, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? This uh, put it in disrespect because. Uh, this, uh, the majority of scientists around the world are uh, are pretty unanimous that there's something here. You know, they may be questioning what causes it, but they're not questioning whether it's happening or not. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I just uh, I, I just don't understand a new administration that Correct. doesn't like the atmosphere Good. and it doesn't right. like old people and it doesn't like poor people. And it wants to put everybody in a bad situation who does, who isn't white in a corporation. You know, I, it bothers me. Uh, and because I'm one of those people. And Phil is, too, whether he knows it or not. You ain't He's rich enough to be part of that club, pal. He's fighting it. <clears throat> You're well, fighting the medical crap. You've got a serious condition, and you have to fight it. And you want you want a special little thing that that uh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, uh, huh? Dave, the, da oh, David. Uh, he got for free. Hi, it, it got for free yeah. in his country that you can't even get here, uh, except at a few places, and that's going to cost you thirty thousand dollars, and no insurance company will pay for it. Well, yeah, I don't, I don't, why don't why don't you just fly over there and spend a week or how many weeks do you have for the treatment? You could probably put yourself ten up days. A, ten days, a decent yeah. hotel for ten days for less than thirty thousand. Anyway, yeah, it, Phil. By the way, I don't think they'll give it to me. Just yeah, quickly, just quickly, uh, I, it, because we got to go. But uh, did you uh, did uh, it, have you been checking on your prostate? I mean, do you see the doctor regularly, and he tells you what's happening with it? Uh, I'm going to go in about another three or four weeks and yeah. get another PSA test. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, he'll they'll keep, they, in other words, it's watchful waiting at this point, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's usually what they're doing. Hey, listen, that's it. I, uh, uh, I'm i sorry to all the people with the TV that we didn't have uh, a panel audio. That happens occasionally. I did something when I set the whole thing up today and I screwed it up. I'm, I'm screwing up a lot lately. Uh, but uh, at least the last 45 minutes to an hour has had the panel, and they've been a good one. It's been Phil Meyer right there, um, and uh, uh, Scott Boddicker right there, and Jeff Stein. Jeff, uh, thank you so much. Rob, always wonderful having you here. Tony, great having you here, and glad we finally got you on. Use that computer all the time, okay? Yeah, I'm going to use the Windows all the time. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and Renee, thank you as well. Thanks to all of you. I appreciate it. Wave goodbye, everybody. There they go. Okay. Goodbye. Okay. And goodbye, everybody. Uh, and goodbye to our, whoops, they hear them all going away. Okay. That's the sound of the audience uh, dispersing. Uh, I really thank you all for being here uh, on this fine, wonderful evening and joining us uh, as we do this um, uh, little uh, gesture of futility that we do every now and then in the meantime uh i'm also sorry that we didn't get audio through the whole uh, whole show for uh, on, the, on the panels part for the tv people but the radio thing just fine and uh, anyway i'm alex bennett that's it for tonight i'll see you again uh, uh let's see on tuesday same time same station in life in the meantime you see her you tell her i love her okay bye Okay, and we stopped our broadcast on the audio. And uh, for the video people, thank you so much for having joined me. Uh, uh, I'm sorry about the audio on the part of the panel, although most of you probably, if I edit this and put it up, uh, won't even uh, hear that part of the show. But thank you for being with me. I appreciate it.